Well, today is June 12th, and June 30th is a lot closer than it was several weeks ago, and that's a date we all need to be looking out for. You are Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked on Pac-12. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day, and your number one source to stay up to date with our media rights free and beloved Conference of Champions. Like, comment, subscribe, please, and thank you. Rate, review, wherever you listen to or watch this show, which today is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked on. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on today to get started. We've got some San Diego State discussion today because that's why June 30th is important. We've got potential numbers to discuss and whether or not the logistics of any school wanting to go to the Big 12, which none of them do, but could they get forced there? Would that even work? All of that coming today. But so June 30th is the day to watch for here. Now, if the Pac-12 doesn't have a media deal, By June 30th, it does not mean the conference is going to collapse. However, it would mean that they will have failed to add San Diego State in this particular cycle, and that would be, in my view, a bad idea. That would be a letdown. That would be a disappointment. I would be upset. I would be frustrated. I would be not. I would not be a happy camper. You get. I try to be as positive as I can at all points in time, while also giving you my honest opinion every day here on the show. If the Pac-12 misses adding San Diego State here, this will not be a happy podcast host. You will not see happy faces. You will see frustrated expressions. You will hear a disgruntled Pac-12 fan for a bevy of reasons. But the reason that June 30th is the day to watch here is because after that day, the fee that San Diego State would have to pay to the Mountain West to leave the conference and go to a Power 5 league, the Pac-12, the Big 12, and they've been very clear, very direct, not hiding the ball. They want to be in the Pac-12. The Pac-12 should want them as well. That fee would double from $17 million to $34 million. Now, part of the reason, there are a myriad of factors here, but part of the reason San Diego State wants to go to the Pac-12 is because there is more money available to them, academically and athletically, right? Even if they wouldn't be, which they wouldn't be, a full media rights earning member right at the start, in all likelihood they would not be that, down the line, they would be able to make up the money that they had to pay to the Mountain West and make it back probably tenfold in the long run in terms of athletic department revenue. And they can run at a deficit for a while. A lot, most athletic departments run at some level of, of a deficit where you're talking about division one schools in the country. It's not as common at the power five, but it does definitely happen as well. It's not unheard of. That would be, you know, perfectly, perfectly manageable for, for San Diego state. But the reason that that deadline matters is because Yes, they are going to go to a conference in the Pac-12, or at least I hope, where they're going to be able to make a lot more money. But $17 million to a school coming from the Mountain West is still a sizable chunk of cash. And if the Pac-12 were to fail to garner together their media rights situation, which is really starting to enter the home stretch here, if they can't do that and invite San Diego State, I seriously doubt the Aztecs would be willing to, you know, commit to going on July 15th, for instance, and paying $34 million because that is a lot of dough. So that's why June 30th is the day to watch here. And my understanding is that it doesn't get, it's not getting talked about as much, which I don't fully understand, but I believe it's the same sort of situation or the similar bylaws for a team leaving a conference for SMU in the American, but I'm unclear really as to why with, with you know, us entering crunch time here and got to get this thing done if you're going to add these schools, I'm unclear as to why SMU is just kind of like faded into the background on the expansion front. Like San Diego State is front and center. Everybody talks about that, but it, 
it, it, it's long been San Diego State and SMU. Those are the top options. Those are the schools that I have long advocated for here on the show to be the top expansion options for the Pac-12. But all of a sudden, it, there's there's just the one school. I'm not saying this is anything. I'm just saying, like, may, maybe see what happens. Because that it strikes me as odd that they were so closely tied together all the time. And now I see San Diego State getting a lot more press. Now, maybe San Diego State is doing that strategically. Maybe they are working to get their name out there the most and be viewed as the top option and all this sort of stuff. But I find that to be curious at, at, at the very least. But this all stems from a mailbag question that came in, by the way, from Charles. And if any of you want to be part of the mailbag, you hop in the YouTube comments, drop one in there, or you can hit me up on Twitter at smalls underscore 55 or at LO underscore PAC 12. Charles asks, what happens if the Big 12 scoops up San Diego State? So with regards to the Aztecs, they've made it immeasurably clear, very obvious, not hiding the ball, they are ready to make a power five jump. They have a desire to, they have the money to, they have the location to, they have the reputation. They just played a national championship game in men's basketball, for goodness sake. There is probably no better time to strike the iron while it's hot for San Diego State to jump to the power five level. They've also, as I mentioned, made it very clear the Pac-12 is where they want to be. It's the best fit. It's the superior academic conference in San Diego State is working to continue to improve its academic standing. I believe they are an R1 institution, and I'm sure they would love one day to get AAU status as Arizona State just did in the Pac-12. But if the Pac-12 drops the ball here and June 30th comes and goes and San Diego State says, no, we... We're, we're, we're not going to be able to pay $34 million. We were willing to pay $17 million, but not 34 which is very reasonable in San Diego State's part if that's the response they gave the Pac-12. The question would then be, and uh, whether it's the San Diego State Athletic Director or President, they've both hinted at, yeah, the Big 12 could maybe be a backup option. Interestingly enough, I've, I've talked to a couple people who cover the Big 12 a lot closer than I do. And they've indicated to me that, look, San Diego State could be an option because Brett Yormark is an aggressive commissioner. He wants to have a national conference. He wants to be everywhere. He wants to have every time zone covered. And San Diego State, a great basketball school, which they also value more than any other league in the country over there in the Big 12, and they are the best at it. It's not worth nearly as much money as football, but it's a clear identity and brand that the Big 12 is, is developing for themselves here. San Diego State makes sense for all of those reasons and many more, but the sense right now is if the Pac-12 doesn't come and offer San Diego State, they would be prepared, San Diego State would, to go to the Big 12, but it's unclear whether or not it's a for sure thing that Brett Yormark would extend to them an invitation. We'll talk more about the Big 12's uh, media deal a touch later and, and how it works for, for adding other schools. But San Diego State coming from the G5 ranks essentially makes that less of a, a done deal, a home run decision. Now, it doesn't mean it couldn't happen, but the idea or the sense before, you know, I, I talked to a couple of people was that at least that I had was that, yeah, of course they would add San Diego State. Who wouldn't? They're ready to be power five. And now it's kind of like, ah. Uh, they're looking at these other schools, right? They're looking at UConn. They're looking at Gonzaga. And if you go add those two basketball brands, you don't have a need to add San Diego State. Gonzaga gets you into the West Coast time zone. UConn gets you further back out east. And they might not want to add any more schools at, at, at this point in time. So it, it doesn't appear that it's a done deal they would go to the big 12 though the big 12 would be foolish, I think, to not give them a look for, for all the reasons that I, that I just discussed. Because I think they'd be a, a a great addition over there. So we 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 got a bunch to get to, a bunch to get to today, including what sorts of dollar amounts would make schools get antsy, like Oregon and Washington, who are now the biggest television products in the Pac-12 from a football standpoint. They are the biggest products, and you can bet bet them over at FanDuel. Whether it's their win total, individual game lines, whatever you want, FanDuel has got you covered. Make a fast break over to FanDuel during the NBA Finals while they're still going on because right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to 2500 
$2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. They've got great promotions every day. It's a safe, secure, super easy to use app. You get paid instantly and there's no better place to bet all the action than America's number one sports book. Visit, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, we've got our second segment sip, which means we can continue on. Will the Big 12 continue on at San Diego State? I don't know. I don't know. Apparently not as sure of a thing as it seemed at one point in time. It could make sense, but if you had a choice, if you're, if you're the Big 12, think about it like this. If you're the Big 12 and you're thinking about adding more schools, would you rather add San Diego State, which did just play in the national championship game, but doesn't have as strong of a brand and is coming from the G5 ranks, or would you rather add UConn and pair them with Gonzaga? I don't know. Maybe you want two West Coast schools. You go Gonzaga, San Diego State, but UConn just won the national championship. And it's, you know, a good spot to be in if you're the Big 12 to be potentially tied to the two basketball schools if you're trying to brand yourself as, you know, the basketball conference to be potentially adding the teams that just played in the national championship game. Pretty good place to be for Brett Yormark and you're really trying to make basketball a thing and you think that there's more value there. And I, I understand the approach for sure. It's not going to get them, you know, significantly more in terms of uh, dollar amounts and media rights and, and all that sort of stuff. But I think it's still an advantageous place to be in to, to where you can be looking at those brands and say, yeah, for what we're trying to accomplish here, they can immediately succeed and they can immediately help us in continuing to further what we are trying to uh, identify ourselves as. But uh, more on that uh, in a little bit. So question here uh this is from tebow 49 again youtube comments or twitter at smalls underscore 55 at lo underscore pack 12 i love answering uh all of your questions they are uh, super super fun for me to dive into including this one tebow 49 asks spencer i have a question what do you think the bottom line amount oregon would take before looking at moving to the big 12 20 million dollars question mark so it's different by school because Oregon and Washington are in positions financially and Stanford and Cal could do this as well if they really wanted to. They're all those four schools are in positions that none of the other schools are in and that's that they are not as significantly impacted by the Comcast overpayments or a lower media rights deal payout, right? or the you know general expansion of financial budgets within athletic departments that's happened over the last several years and is continuing, frankly, as we speak in college football, they're not as impacted by that because they're either in a big market, have a big brand, or have super wealthy donors, or all three. And those schools, it, it's, it's just about having a willingness to put the effort, to put the time in, to recoup, uh, you know, dollars that might be lost in a gap between the Pac-12 media deal and other media rights deals. But whether or not schools would get antsy, you know, the only presidents or administrators of actual universities, right, not just, you know, speculation or uh, prognostication, anything like that, the only comments that we have seen that indicate a school, if the dollar figure is so far below where the Big 12 is, that they would they would consider a move to the Big 12 are Arizona and Colorado. Those are the only ones. Arizona State, there has not been real smoke there. Utah has shut it down immediately and quickly all the time. So the the dollar figure there, you like Oregon and Washington, I don't think there's any kind of world where they would end up in the Big 12. I, I, I do not foresee a world in which that could happen. Other schools, I foresee it, or, or I could foresee it, but I do not think that it is particularly likely, pending what the media deal is, sure. But in all likelihood, I think everyone ends up staying together. They had San Diego State and SMU and the payouts are what they are. But so even if you read between the lines on the comments from those two schools, Arizona and Colorado, 
Robert Robbins had a remark a while ago. And again, these comments get lost in the weeds because Big 12 people are super active on, on Twitter and are trying to control the narrative and whatnot, and only certain quotes stand out. I mean, that's just social media in general, right? Like, that, I completely understand all, all that sort of stuff. But the only comment that he's made on, on this specific matter was you know a rhetorical question he po he posed posited to a reporter a while back and he said why would we leave for a couple million dollars so let's just say for the sake of argument and simplicity and going off of you know what is reality here which is the situation that he's describing let's say he's looking at anywhere from two to three million dollars as yeah okay that's that's not enough of a difference in the athletic department budget. Because remember, the money that goes to these schools from the media rights payouts and from the conferences when you factor in the postseason and whatnot, that is going to the athletic department, not the football program, the athletic department. There might be other expenses within said department where if you get more money than you had under the previous deal, that money might need to go. And I bring that up to say that just because you might be getting more, so like the Big 12 teams, you know, are making more under their, their current deal than the old one because these deals are all exploding exponentially, right? Every single athletic department has a unique operating budget. They are not all identical here, right? They have similar expenses, coaching salaries, equipment, you know, administrators, everybody like that. But for example, Washington State is in a different situation right now than Oregon, for instance, you haven't heard a peep anywhere about Oregon having financial issues within their athletic department, because to my knowledge, they don't have them. You haven't heard that about Stanford. You haven't heard that about Cal, but you have heard it some other places like Colorado, for instance, Rick George, the athletic director a while ago said very openly and honestly, yeah, we're still trying to kind of come up with the money that we're going to pay Dion. Okay. Other schools in the conference, the four I mentioned that, that have the most money just kind of as, as universities as a whole that they can put into their athletic department, Oregon is not still trying to find the money to pay Dan Lanning. Washington's not still trying to find the money to pay Kalen DeBoer and Stanford and Cal with, with, with their coaches as well. And most places aren't like that. But I, I'm, I'm just trying to lay, you know, the I'm, I'm just trying to make a point about every school is different. So if, if the Pac-12 were to suddenly let's just say right to complete this this hypothetical point that I'm, that I'm making here in a long-winded fashion but every day is no that's kind of how it works around here let's say the pac-12 were to blow everybody out of the water and they were to get 40 million dollars a year from their pac-12 or from the pac-12 media deal right and that would be going to every single current member school that money is not going to be spent the same way at every institution because Washington State is currently dealing with a budget crisis at the moment. And so if they were to get that amount of money in a couple years, they wouldn't use it to pay an assistant coach extra money to stop him from going somewhere else. They wouldn't use it necessarily to raise the salary of Jake Dickert if they felt that he had earned that as the head coach of their football program or Kyle Smith of the basketball program. They would probably use it to try and fill in the gaps on the budget shortfalls that they are currently undergoing. So every school, you know, the, the point I'm making here is every school sees the money and distributes it differently. Now, that doesn't mean that none of it can end up going back to the football program. But Robert Robbins remarks about, well, why would we go for, you know, a few million dollars more or a couple million dollars more? I think that's kind of where that comes from is you know, $2 million more to an athletic department. That, that's, that's, that's just not that much. $3 million. It's, it's again, still not that much. Four, five, six. Now you're kind of getting into a significant amount, but it depends on each and every individual school. So the other way to look at this conversation with regards to the numbers is if you are if you're trying to figure out like what would make schools get antsy, what would make programs see themselves as being at too much of, of a deficit, you have to figure out a couple of things. Number one, how much money they feel they can they can raise, right? To have right because this is just af athletic uh, media rights revenue. There are a lot of other ways athletic departments get money. So, how much they feel they can raise, how much do they feel is a significant amount, and also. If, if you're talking about the actual physical dollar amounts, right? Like, why would we go for two, three million dollars more? Let's say in the eyes of Robert Robbins, five million dollars was a significant enough gap. If you go to the Big 12, 
those schools are located much further away than the schools in the Pac-12. Now, are they that far from Texas? No. But they're pretty far from some of the other schools in the Big 12, which now includes Cincinnati and Central Florida. So the operating costs of your athletics department can now increase by a sizable amount. And the generalized, there, there isn't a specific number because it's team dependent. But remember, you are, you are paying scholarships for it. That comes from the school. But you are paying for meals, travel, equipment, training, coaches, all that sort of stuff for dozens of sports. These are multi-million dollar operations here. So if you increase the travel that you are experiencing, like UCLA and USC are going to do in the Big Ten, the amount of money that you are getting that is greater than what you would have received in the Pac-12 has to offset and then vastly surpass the increased amount of travel costs that you now have playing in a conference that is further away because the baseball team is going to travel to all those all, all those teams in all those states, right? Well, guess what? The baseball team has got, what, 40, 50 guys on it? You've got support staff and you've got coaches. Those sorts of costs add up really, really fast. And they're not the only team. If you have a gymnastics program, my goodness, that's dozens and dozens this is not you know a, like a basketball team has a relatively condensed roster compared to some of the other sports on campus you know baseball and uh, softball ha softball is not as big as baseball of course but still it's pretty sizable and such and then you have men's and women's basketball you could have gymnastics tennis teams like th there are a lot of you know what they call olympic sports in there so the, the dollar amount widely, from, from what I've come to understand, is about 2 to $3 million more. So if the Pac-12 media deal were to come in at $25 million, everyone say, oh, it's $6 million more. Why wouldn't you go? No, it's not $6 million more. It's at most four and maybe probably closer to three. Because you're spending two to three million dollars more in paying for everybody to travel and such. So with that in mind, the number that I would come down to, and again, depends on each school. I haven't had the opportunity to ask every single Pac-12 athletic director, though I'd love to, what that number could be. My guess is it would have to be more than five million dollars. That 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 that'd be my best guess. Is it would have to be more than five. So that means that the number that I think that would prevent either Arizona or Colorado from giving further consideration to jumping over to the Big 12, when you factor in, let's call it $3 million for travel costs, and you need about a $5 million gap, the Pac-12 probably needs to find a deal that is in the range of $23 to $24 million per school per year to make it I think more likely than not that a school would not jump. Now, maybe $5 million is in the range, right? Maybe for Arizona and Colorado, it's, you know, $3 million, right? Maybe it's four, maybe it's 10, maybe it's 20. Not sure. But to your original question here, you know, if what, what, what would make a school like Oregon jump? I, I don't know that Oregon would jump because Oregon has, is, is so closely tied to Washington, Every time they get mentioned in realignment, they're always put together. It's because of the history of their rivalry. There's history between the two schools. Washington as a university, I don't think would ever, not, not, not as a football program, as a university. Remember, what do we say? Presidents vote on realignment. Going to my gravestone when I die in 60 years. Mm, no, I want to go longer than that. 70. Mm, that might be too long. 65. Let's call it, call it even 65. So in 65 years on my gravestone, Presidents vote on realignment, not athletic directors, right? That's our line. I do not believe the University of Washington would jump. And I do not believe as well that Washington would go anywhere without Oregon, nor would Oregon go anywhere without Washington. Because you have to have a travel partner and you're trying to find the most valuable brand and team and TV product possible. And they are that that is now left in, in the Pac-12. Now, Utah fits in there as well, but Utah doesn't have, from a TV viewership standpoint, but Utah doesn't have the ties to Oregon and Washington. They would go to the Big Ten and leave Utah behind. But I don't think there's a world in which one team goes somewhere between Oregon and Washington without the other. 
and I don't think Washington would ever go to the Big 12. So I don't know that there is a number. I mean, if if the Pac-12, you know, came in and it was $20 million per school per year, and you're staring at an $11 million deficit, even when you offset the travel costs, that's still, you know, around 8 to $9 million a year. Yeah, that, that might be enough. But then if you're Oregon and Washington... Are they going to are they, are they going to go to the Big Twelve? Is the Big Ten going to come in and try to get them on the cheap? I don't know. We'd have to assess if that uh, if that ever came to pass. But I, uh, I I think that's kind of the best rundown that that I can give on that. But uh, love the question. Uh, by the way, there was another one that came in that I'm going to get to on tomorrow's show because I ran long uh, answering that one. There, um, shorts all year is uh, the question asker who who sent it in. You know who you are. Uh, your question will definitely be answered on uh, tomorrow's show. Might even be the lead. You never know what can go down. But I'm going to close with this uh, <laughs> with this lovely nugget. This is from uh, N J B O L. N J B O A L. I don't know. That doesn't in English. Those three letters can't go together. He says, "Hey Spencer." Occurred to me on my drive home yesterday while listening to one or the other of your shows. And maybe this has already come up. Newsflash, my friend. It has not. Here's my thought on your name change. Not that you need one. Wait for it. Spencer McLockdon. Take care. <laughs> That's how we're ending today's show. Spencer McLockdon signing off for today. Appreciate everyone listening. I will see you next time. And until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.